In this video, we'll go through some of the new features of iGuess version 7.2. Most of these new features can be found on the analysis ribbon, which we have split into supervised and unsupervised tools. We've added a classification and regression trees workflow. And this workflow includes classification tree, regression tree, and random forest. And we also have TSNE algorithm as a new dimension reduction technique. We also have made some streamlining changes to the regression tool. And lastly, we have made it possible for users to add their own samples to the rock and mineral composition library. Classification trees are a series of optimized binary splits that allocate samples into groups. A classification tree can be trained on known groups to predict groupings in other datasets. Classification tree uses all selected numeric variables in a file to differentiate between target groups. Target groups can be defined from unique values within a text column or from color groups set in the attribute manager. This configuration dialog is also used to constrain the size of the tree to make sure it does not over or underfit the data. We provide three methods of splitting your data to create a decision tree, with the Gini index being the most commonly used method. Our classification tree also supports partitioning the file into training and test datasets. All visible rows were used to train this classification tree. The tree itself is a visual representation of how the training data is allocated into target groups. And as we use color groups, it's easy to see the series of splits and decisions that were taken to allocate samples into target groups. The accuracy of this tree is 95%, and you can bring up a confusion matrix to show the number of predicted versus actual samples within each group. Another method of assessing the quality of the tree is by bringing up the tree report. And here we can see which of the input variables are more important for allocating the samples in the target groups. So we started off with 13 variables, but here we see that really only four variables were used in splitting our data. So we can select just those four variables, the obvious advantage is with large datasets where we can use 4 instead of 13 variables and still achieve a similar result. This is also useful for other exploratory purposes. The training accuracy, as you can see, remains at 95% even with using only 4 variables. If the tree overfits the data, there are ways to solve this. We provide k-fold cross-validation technique to determine the optimal number of nodes in the tree. So here we can see that the best classification is achieved at 14 nodes. We can change the maximum number of nodes in the tree to 14. And we can also partition the data into training and test data sets to see how well it performs. The recommended data partition is 70% training to 30% tests. We can change the partition ratio using this slider. And we can also enable stratified sampling. Either way, we have now partitioned the tree and limit its size to an optimal maximum of 14 leaf nodes. Once we're happy with our tree, we can now use it to apply predictions to our data. This dataset has a group of unknown samples in the Copper Gossam Neo group. For this workflow, the Copper Gossam Neo group will need to be set to invisible in the attribute manager. We can then choose to run only the visible data through the training tree. Or we can run invisible rows only through the tree. Notice that the tree only predicts classification for eight rows in the invisible group. We can also run all data in the file through the tree to predict classification for all samples. We will now rerun the classification for the invisible rows only, and we can add the tree prediction for invisible rows to the dataset as a new column. We can see how by using this classification tree, we have predicted that the unknown copper Gaussian group actually belong to the Cypress Gaussian group. As shown before, we can also run the classification tree on all rows in the file to see how well it can predict your data. As part of the card workflow, we also provide the random forest tool. Random Forest builds multiple classification trees at the same time. So this example runs 500 classification trees. Looking at the created confusion matrix and report, we can see 8% of the data have been misclassified. One advantage of Random Forest, however, is that it does not overfit the data. Prediction results from the Random Forest tool can be output as a new column in a data set. When we're looking to find an optimum set of parameters to predict the value of a target group, regression trees can be used. For example, if I want to predict a copper grade using the assay results from a number of known samples, I will need to first select all the predictor variables and then leave the target variable out. So we can select copper as a response variable. The resulting regression tree will attempt to come up with an optimal set of splitting criteria to predict the response variable. We can then use the regression tree to create predicted values for the target variable. In this case, we can make it to predict copper values for the invisible color attribute group. 
Same as classification tree, we can output the result as a new column in the file. Here we can select the original, predicted, and residual columns for copper, and we can use the resulting information to assess how well the regression tree predicts the target variable. You can use classification tree to predict rock classification, neuralization type, alteration type, basically any scenario where you want to classify data and repeat the classification with new data. One strong advantage of classification tree is it's also non-parametric, so there is no need to transform your data beforehand, unlike some of our other tools like PCA or TSNE. TSNE is a new feature in 7.2 and is an unsupervised non-linear dimension reduction technique. It can be used as an exploratory method to see if there's a pattern within the data. We provide two TSNA libraries and a number of methods or algorithms to choose from. TSNA works best with data that's centered and scaled or logged, so we would recommend selecting the log 10, z-score, and scale 0 to 1 transformation option. There's a number of other parameters here that you can configure, which are all explained in our help file. The output columns from the TSNE are dimension reductions of the input variables. This is the same data set as before, so we can see how TSNE was used to project our 13 assay columns to two TSNE columns displayed here in the scatter plot. The TSNE columns did a good job of organizing the data into clusters. The TSNE is unsupervised, meaning that it does not know anything about pre-existing groups within the data. Being a non-linear dimension reduction technique, as opposed to a linear dimension reduction technique like the PCA, it can sometimes reveal additional insights into the structure of your data. It's important to transform your input variables in order to get the best TSNE results. You may notice that I have added text labels next to each point. Now you will need to go to the column properties or the select labels dialog to know what column was used to activate the point label. So now we'll move on and look at how we have improved the regression analysis tool in this version of GAS. This data set consists of assay data analyzed using two different methods. The changes we made to this tool will make it easier to look at this sort of data. We've made it possible to now do multiple simple regressions at the same time. We use the same x, y, and y, x paradigm as select variables and scatter plot. So in here, the first variable, Aaron, is used as the explanatory variable. And if I use yx, iron is used as the response variable, and the other variables as the explanatory variables. We kept multiple regression the same as in 7.1. Pairwise regression is also available. I'm selecting pairs of elements analyzed by 4-acid and aqua regia. Pairwise regression works like multiple simple regression on selected pairs. So in this way, you can easily analyze the regression for the selected pairs of elements. One use for this new workflow is to display and interpret data collected by different analytical methods or for XRF calibration. You can plot the pairwise regression result in a diagram and you can save that as an XML file. So to sum up, the new workflow makes it easier to perform multiple separate simple regressions. Before we talk about the last big feature, which is the user-defined rock and minerals library, I'd like to run through some other minor improvements in this release. If you work with a set palette of colors, like colors of rock type or accompanying colors, we've added a color dropper on the attribute manager. Right click on a color circle and click see anywhere on your screen to capture a color. This will be much faster than typing in an RGB code each time you want to add your own custom colors. So now I'm opening an Excel spreadsheet file and if I want to save it as a .guess file, you can see that in a save dialog, it will automatically insert the imported file name as a save name. We've now also made it possible to append .gas workspace files, whereas before we can only append CSV, text, or Excel file. So now I'm going to make a couple of XY scatter plots, and then I'm going to append a .gas file to this workspace. Appending gas files is the same as appending with any other file, and we have also made it so that new data points from the append are automatically displayed on any existing plots. Another new minor improvement is in the biplot tool, where we now have the ability to set the rendering order like we do in all of our other plots in GAS. So here you can see how I set it to render by color with the first color group on the list on top and change it to render by size. So the last major feature in this release that I want to go through 
in the video is the user defined rock and minerals composition library. User nodes can be found as a new tab in the minerals and rock composition dialog, seen here open from an XY scatter plot. And you can see how we can now resize this dialog. User nodes are loaded from a specially formatted Excel spreadsheet file, and it's in this example user notes that these nodes were loaded from a spreadsheet that's found under your app data roaming IAGAS folder if you're running IAGAS in Windows. A user node is functionally similar to mineral and rock nodes, so you can only plot them on the plots or diagrams containing alias variables. We provide an example user node file that can be edited with your own nodes. Note that in the Mac version of GAS, this file will be found under the app slash notes folder. To edit this file, simply add a new row to the file or edit an existing one. The first five columns in this file determine how the user node will be displayed in the user node library. Columns from J up to CM are all essay columns, and you can type in the essay value for a user node. And please note that this is all in weight percent. Note that the top three highlighted header rows in a user node spreadsheet, like the one I highlighted just now, they must not be modified in any way. So let's save this as a user nodes file which you can save as either XLSX or XLS, as both will be recognized by IOGAS. Back in GAS, if you click on the rocks and mineral dialog, it will automatically pick up any spreadsheet in the user nodes folder. And you can choose to display them in a scatter plot like now. Note that you can also set up a central location to share your user nodes with your colleagues, much like having a shared folder for user diagrams and calculations. Another way of adding user notes to the library, and it's an easier option, is via the export user notes tool. So this is the same Gaussian data set that we have looked at in the start of the video, and we're going to export samples that we classified as Cypress Gaussian into a user notes file. You will have to match existing text columns in your file to the fields here to define how user, your user notes will be displayed in your plots and within the library. By default, it will export only the visible rows as user nodes, but you can set it to export all rows instead from the file. The export tool will automatically convert all alias columns in your file to weight percent and exported file. So just as a refresher, these are the eight samples that we classified using these three that we classified into the Cypress Gossam group. So let's turn all of the other samples back on and we can see where the new user nodes will be plotting in an XY scatter plot. Another good thing about using the export tool is that you can choose samples from your workspace to add into the library all within a single session in GAS. You can add any sort of composition to the library from custom rock composition specific to your deposits or versions of minerals or other minerals that are not available in our mineral library. One last thing before we finish, you can click on a customer service portal icon on the help ribbon to access our new service portal. You will need to register to access this portal, but it will only take a couple of minutes to do so. You can find IGAS FAQs under our new knowledge base, and you can also lodge support queries and request enhancements from within the portal. If you wish to find out more about the features in this video, there's more information within our help file. Thanks for watching and let us know if you have any questions.